So after seeing multiple polls, well, it confirmed what we suspected. Biden's student debt forgiveness plan is incredibly popular and a majority of Americans, again, according to multiple polls, either support Biden's plan to cancel ten dollars to $20,000 worth of debt, or they want him to go even further. So this is a very popular policy. So in their infinite wisdom, what are Republicans deciding to do about this? Will, of course, attack it, undermine it, and ultimately, they're trying to block it. Now, there's a number of ways that they're going about this. At the state level, GOP governors are trying to undermine this by counting student debt relief as taxable income. So that way it's not as powerful as Biden initially had planned. And Mississippi is the first state to actually confirm that they will indeed be doing this. So much for the party of tax cuts, right? But they're also trying to block this at the federal level as well. How? Well, Republican attorneys general, along with some GOP senators and officials, some organizations like the Heritage Foundation, they're gearing up to sue the Biden administration in order to block this. And they're doing this because we all know what would happen in the event this reached the Supreme Court. They would block Biden from canceling ten dollars to $20,000 worth of student debt. So the Washington Post has the scoop on this. Republican state attorneys general and other leading conservatives are exploring a slew of potential lawsuits targeting President Biden's plan to cancel some student debt, challenges that could limit or invalidate the policy before it takes full effect. In recent days, a number of GOP attorneys general from states including Arizona, Missouri, and Texas have met privately to discuss a strategy that could see multiple cases filed in different courts around the country. According to a person and familiar with their thinking who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe the confidential talks. Other influential conservatives, including Senator Ted Cruz and allies of the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank, are mulling their own options as they ratchet up criticism of Biden's debt relief plan to additional people familiar with the matter said. And a conservative advocacy group founded by a major Trump donor said it would file a lawsuit against the policy. All of the sources cautioned that no decisions have been made, and as of Thursday morning, no lawsuits appear to have been filed. So this is something that they're currently mulling over. It's not confirmed. And the reason why they haven't already filed a lawsuit, which I'd argue they would have done the second Biden made this announcement, is because it's kind of difficult to do. Ted Cruz even admits that it's really difficult to find an American citizen who has standing to sue the government to stop student debt relief. Like you can't just pluck some random conservative off the streets and claim that they want to sue the federal government because they're mad that they have to pay for this handout to people who went to college. You can't do that. So what Ted Cruz uh, is basically suggesting is what if we found a college student who didn't necessarily benefit from student debt forgiveness, but is paying his own tuition, for example, and is going to make the case that this should be stopped because it's going to lead to an increase in tuition across the country. I mean, that's one way that you can find a plaintiff that has standing. The problem is that how do you prove that? How do you prove right now in 2022 before this policy has taken effect that this is going to increase college tuition? I mean, perhaps if you wait a year, college tuition is always going up. So you can just argue that correlation does, in fact, equal causation. But the problem is that you have no proof for this claim. Therefore, if someone like Ted Cruz were to try to find a plaintiff to make this argument, well, by the time you're able to come up with any evidence, if this is indeed the case, the policy will have already taken effect and the debt, at least 10 to 20,000 of it, will have already been canceled. So there's really not a lot that you can do. And when it comes to whether or not somebody has standing to legally block the federal government from canceling student debt, well, the Virginia Law Review tackled this question earlier on April 15th, and they concluded that no one has standing in court to sue for broad student debt cancellation. So the reason why they're dragging their feet and they haven't already filed a lawsuit is because this is tricky, right? It's a little bit more difficult than it looks. But Let's catastrophize for a moment. What if it is the case that they find somebody who has standing and this makes it through the court system and it reaches the Supreme Court? Well, it's still not going to be the nightmare scenario for people who are benefiting from student debt cancellation because as Mark Joseph Stern writes in an article for Slate, SCOTUS will probably kill student debt relief, but Biden has a backup plan. Now, the article itself is really long and in-depth, but we're not going to read all of it. But basically, what Mark Joseph Stern does is he formulates three potential arguments that the Supreme Court will most likely use to legally invalidate student debt cancellation and then debunks them and claims mm, even if they follow through on this and they say that Biden can't do this, 
Biden can still cancel student debt. So let's read the article here. There are at least three major questions that the Supreme Court could identify here. First, the majority might say that the ability to waive or modify aspects of the law, now they're referring to the HEROES Act passed in 2003, which both Biden and Trump used to cancel some student debt, does not allow the secretary to cancel payments. Second, the majority could say that COVID is not the kind of national emergency envisioned by the law. Third, the majority could say that an affected group must be smaller and more targeted than every lower middle income American who lived through the pandemic. The first line of attack would be very weak. Both Congress and the Department of Education have operated for years on the assumption that the secretary can permanently cancel some loans. SCOTUS could not abolish this power without wreaking havoc on the entire system. The second would be feeble too. Whatever the court thinks about COVID, the HEROES Act is very clear that a presidential declaration of a national emergency triggers the law. What's more debatable is the third potential line of attack. Can the secretary really just decide that COVID put 43 million non-wealthy Americans in a worse position? Position financially in relation to their loans. It's easy to imagine the Supreme Court ruling that the secretary must identify a more specific case of borrowers whose ability to pay off loans was demonstrably harmed by the pandemic. But, and this is key, if the court chooses this route, though, there's a straightforward fix. Biden can simply announce that any borrower affected by the pandemic can apply for relief. If they can prove hardship, their debts get canceled. Now, obviously, that's not necessarily ideal because it would shrink the pull of beneficiaries considerably, but still Biden would have some way to unilaterally cancel student debt in the worst case scenario of Republicans suing and having their case make it all the way to the Supreme Court, assuming, again, that they can find a plaintiff who has legal standing. But because this is so complicated and they're really treading on legally gray and murky territory, it seems unlikely that this is the route that they go to undermine Joe Biden because it doesn't necessarily seem like it might be successful and it's going to be costly. Now they have unlimited resources, so they have no reason to not try. But really, I think that the biggest threat that we're going to see is Republican governors counting student debt relief as taxable income. Now, if this doesn't really seem possible. Well, why would they still try to do the lawsuit? In my opinion, this is nothing more than virtue signaling and pandering to uh, their base. Now, it's weird that they would take this particular position, considering that Biden got a 9% spike when it comes to his approval rating following his announcement that he will be canceling student debt. This is according to a Quinnipiac poll conducted between August 25th and 29th. Now that same poll finds once again that a majority of Americans support student debt cancellation. Now, additionally, Cook Political Report shifted five competitive House races to favor Democrats following a spike in voter enthusiasm for Democrats after they passed the Inflation Reduction Act and Biden announced that he would indeed be canceling ten to $20,000 worth of student debt. So after seeing how popular this is, Republicans are going all in on attacking it. And they haven't learned because they're already having to backtrack when it comes to their extreme stance on abortion. If you look at Blake Masters, well, he's having to kind of walk back more extreme elements of his forced birther status. And now GOP, once again, is running into a disaster, head first screaming, we're going to be against this incredibly popular policy. Okay, well, have at it. If it seems like they're not that likely to succeed and this will only hurt their chances in November, I'm all for it. So have at it. And you'll learn the hard way that Americans actually support student debt relief and getting young people excited is really bad news for the Republican Party. Because not only are young voters more likely to support Biden, but in the event Republicans actually were able to take away the ten dollars to $20,000 that would have been in their pockets had they not blocked this, oh, I mean, young people are going to have a vendetta against Republicans even more so than they already have. So this isn't a war that Republicans want. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man. Huh?